stop. Wait. I know it's tempting to go for a walk right now, but I created that intro to show you a sample use of a custom animated transition. How cool was that? These in your face motion graphic transitions are great interrupts and I often use them as intro dividers. Like when I introduce a tip in a listicle style video, or I shift gears and will want to segue into what's next in my video. Today, you're going to see how easy it is to create a cool spinner transition, just like the one I used in the intro. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here and welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. For starters, I just wanted to note that these types of transitions are sparingly used as compared to the more subtle traditional fades or jump cuts. Now for our examples today, all you really need is an image with a pattern that looks cool when it spins. Yep, we're making a custom transition spinner. So let's play a few examples and I'll show you the images that we use to produce these and talk a bit about the behaviors and animations and text. And then we'll jump into uh, one of our examples to see how it's put together. So as you can see in this first one, this custom custom transition spinner, we have a nice polka dot theme and it spins beautifully with the dots and disappears. And we have, uh, you, you know, just some of the subtleties to notice are how the drop shadows are used and how even white text shows nice on the background. So for that one, all we needed was this image right here. They're kind of cartoonish in style from a, some package I got, but I just wanted to share with you that all I needed was an image and I added all that motion and capabilities to what we have here. In our next example, I'm going to spin right now. Look at the nice colors in that with the lines and the stars. And that just looks so cool. And then we used the text and sort of leveraged off some of the colors in the image. And as you can see that the text on the background has a nice solid drop shadow. It's a very crisp, just to take note of that. Cause you know, when you get a busy background, it's important to be able to make sure that your, your text pops and stands out. So for that one, as you can see, I found a square image. This actually came from deposit photos. And uh, of course you can go search anywhere on the web, as long as you address whatever rights considerations that you need in order to use um, the asset, it's all cool. So because this one's square, as compared to the last one, which was uh, 16 by nine, we have, you know, different considerations that we need to factor in when we're dealing with the spinning. And we'll get to that when we look at our example. Okay. When we look at the next one in our list here, we play, look at that cool stars. And we had some really nice text in the background here. And notice that we put a shape layer with an opacity so just so that we can make the text stand out and, and be more visible. Also notice that, um, you know, it, it's not really symmetrical, but it looks cool when it spins. So that creativity is up to you and what you choose. And I find by, by playing with different concepts and ideas, you'll find something that, that works for you. Next one. Now in this one, sort of the last quick example I'm going to show before we dive into the, the details. This I'm just first showing you, this is just me and I have me on because I'm going to show me in the transition. So as this plays, you'll see that an impl that this is an implode behavior and then it ends with an explode and it fades out to the corner and the right with a spin and a twist. Now that was really cool. So that was using the implode explode behaviors in addition. And if you'll notice, there's some cool subtleties you know, the byproducts of the opacity changing as it overlays. And then I, I disappear. And then, uh, we did some cool stuff with the text, as you can see how it goes from the out to the inner and, uh, it's cool. We're going to dive in now. So we're going to focus on our spiral example, and I'm going to build it in two parts. The first part is going to be this, which is just the basics with the spinning of the object and then the counterclockwise spin and then the shrink out. 
And as you know, when I showed the spiral example before with the pictures of me before and after, we actually had an implode behavior on the front end and an explode behavior on the back end, which gave another whole fancy dimension to things. So how did we make this? So we're going to show you, we actually made it in a couple of steps. So first step is I have this library asset, which I'm going to use, bring onto the timeline and just bring things over a little bit and center it. So here's the library asset, as you can see in here on the, the bottom layer. Now, remember, this is all grouped because it's been dropped in from the library. That's how it works. You drop an asset onto the timeline and it's grouped. We're going to leave everything grouped because we don't need to ungroup to achieve what we're going to do. So if I click on this asset in context and go update media and go to my graphics fo uh, folder here, I'll find the spiral and I'll just substitute it in through the update media. And now when we come back here, you'll see there it is. The spirals in there. The only thing that's different is our text. So we need to fix that. And the text we had was spiral and it said spinning illusion. Okay. So we come in here and we click on the text. You know, basically we're done. And the reason why there was not much to do to create this is because the image sizes were the same. So everything fits nicely, but now we're going to look at the anatomy of the behaviors and the animations so that you can appreciate all that's been put together here. So on the top layer, which we're not focusing on today is the sound effects and the sound effects just coincide with the actual spinning motion that's on the front end. That's the spin in the, which is a clockwise spin. And then the sound works on the back end when we're doing the counterclockwise spin. Okay. And then a shrink after. So we're not focused there, but now as you can see on the, on the, uh, picture here, if I shrink things in our canvas, open things back up here, you're going to see that as we come to this animation, this is the end point. I'm going to shrink it even more what we have in the canvas, see how big it is. And at the end point there, if I come to our um, properties, you're going to see that I have a scale of 244%. And well, why is that? So I went from a 0% at the beginning, sorry, from 100% to a scaling of 244. And the reason I did that is because I needed to get this, the spiral big enough. So the picture so that when I went to do a spin, nothing got cut off. So as you can see here at the end, we have 225, but at the start we have 244. So watch what happens as I go, I'm going to go frame by frame by just pressing the period key on windows. So see the spin going. So look at how on the corners that we just have a little bit of clearance all around as we go. So that's why I scaled it up to get to that level. But when we get to the end here, I tightened back down a little bit to 225 on the scaling. So all this animation is doing is basically in the first step, we are growing straight up the size to scale to 244, as you see in the top right here. And then we spin and through the spin, you'll see at the end value, we went for 720 degrees minus 720, which means two times 360. So we did two spins. That's what you see in here. There's two spins going. And then uh, we settled at also a scale of 225. So I shrunk the scale a tiny bit just so that I could get a little more of the spiral on. And then through the middle, you'll see there's a behavior there, a pulsing. You can see the, you can see the spiral pulsing a bit, but then when we get to the point where the text finishes, okay, we're still at that, you know, level of two to 225 in the scale. We're going to now do the spin to go the counterclockwise. And what we do at the end keyframe point, we set zero. So that does the reverses out the 720 degree spin. Plus I put the scale back to our 244. Okay. So as you can see, when we come from here, we're doing the counterclockwise spin, and then we're going to come and settle at our 244. Now from there, 
Our goal is, as you know, there's no more spin. We just shrink out. So if I, if I go to the end keyframe of the next animation, you see it says 0.9%. Well, that value is actually one because you can't, like if I put zero in here, you'll see it says that the numbers have to be one, between one and 9999. So um, one, I don't know why it shows 0.999, but the 1% is what we have. So you can see that at the end, it's totally disappearing, right? So the spin and then shrink to disappear. And as it disappears, the black area will be whatever is on the other side of the transition coming in. Okay, so that's it. That sort of gives you a feel for the animations that have been added, okay, and, and how that all works. Now let's look at the behaviors, okay? So I'm gonna open up the behavior. You can see we have pulsating. And I showed you when we were in the middle that you can more visibly see that it's pulsating in there, okay? So if we go and we look more closely at the behavior, the end we did, so we added the pulsating behavior. There's nothing there. The during is the pulsate and the out is the shrink. So this was all done with the default behavior of pulsating, no changes. Okay, now let's look at our text, which is above. And our text has a behavior, which we had, which is scale. So on the in, it was grow and on the during none and on the out shrink and again we just did everything as default so it was pretty straightforward so as you can see on the shrink on the in the text goes left to right and on the out it also goes left to right so see that as we enter in it's left to right and as it as it's going to go out it's also going left to right okay but we have ease out movement so that adds to the effect of the text going out and on the in we have a spring and that's again this is all the default behavior that's how it has that nice bounce in okay so not much done or chained or, or altered in the base okay now let's go and see what we did to adapt this to go to the full-blown finished version so for the full-blown version, in this example, I, I, I decided to add a picture of me on the front and the end so that you could just see how the, how the transition works and because there's some really cool subtleties that happen. So if you watch here when I press play, you'll notice how there was um, transparency. I'm going to go frame by frame here. That happened so fast. So if you look here, the uh, Im implode behavior fly in, spins in, twists and then comes into place it's very cool and likewise on the exit you're going to see that uh, not only do we spin in the opposite way do you see the twisting and flying out and how it nicely had transitioned over to the new picture so there's a lot going on there so let's unpack that we'll go in here and uh, first I want to mention that uh, I originally in the in the original example had a four second and 22 frame length solution now we have six second and eight frames so how did I do that so just looking at the structure here I want you to note a few things the text was added right at the end here so after this the the um, motion of this this the spin completes okay that's when our text comes on screen okay and likewise, in the end here, you know, the text comes off and then the counterclockwise spin starts there. So the text is uh, strategically placed at a certain distance. So when I stretched the text out, I made sure that it, it started where the spin was, was commencing here. Sorry, the text ended where the, the spin commenced. And then to line things up with the sound effect, and um, all I had to do was move the sound effect to the end where it should be and I measured back and I got seven frames there so I know that meant I had to position the extension of the image whoops extension of the image to be that seven frames back from the edge and then once those two were aligned this one is pretty easy to align because I then just moved the um, the, these two 
animations, right? Which you can slide like that, right? So I slid them towards the end, but what, what was my guide? My guide there was that again, the distance from the end was approximately, so I'm going to go to the end. I used this up based on the shorter version. My guide was there 26. Okay. So that's how far back I had to be. So once, uh, for the end of, um, the anim the animation. And once I knew that, okay, it was easy enough to um, work on aligning the rest. So as I mentioned, the text should come in to where the spin is. To where the spin starts, sorry. So the text ends, then the spin starts, right? Just tuning that. Let's see. Play. There we go. So now, inside here, what did we do? So we added, we actually changed the whole pulsating behavior. Remember, this was all the defaults before. So we changed the in to be an implode, and we used a movement of bounce and an implode style. So what did that do? That now gave us this really cool, you know, twisting, spinning motion, whereas before it was just a grow. And you can tell that by... If we just reset this okay and remember before it, it was just a situation I'll go frame by frame where it just grew into place but now when we uh, undo and play again you'll see the comparative that it has uh, that whole twisting and cool part the way it fades in and the implode sort of g goes and then when we get to the explode stage okay you see how 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 it's kind of twisting and turning and then disappearing out the right side. Well, that's because of the explode behavior. So we did an explode and a bounce here. Now, again, if I turn that so you can see the explode and the, it comes out like that. If I reset, uh, it's just the, sh the, sh the shrink that it was before. And you see it would shrink into the middle. So what's really cool is instead of just the shrink into the middle, when we, when we put back the explode, it doesn't shrink into the middle. It does a twist and a turn and it goes out the right side. And that's all built in by the explode behavior automatically. So that's why you need to play with the styles, see what kind of an effect it creates. And if you like it, then bingo, you're a happy camper. Okay, so that's basically how those things kind of came together. And then I did some modifications on the, uh, the text in here. And if you see under our scale property, okay, so you'll see I did text center to out and then ease both expo. So watch what happens, you know, the te when the text starts. So as you know, okay, the text starts in about here. So see how it comes, the text comes in, you see how it's narrower on the outside but then it gets bigger through the center and fills out well that was achieved by virtue of the text center to out okay and then on the the back end okay on the out watch what happens okay where well, here we go so see it's starting there look on the out though it's text out to center so see how it goes towards the center it's, and fades. Okay, there you have it. That gives you an idea of all the cool things that were done to adapt to create this transition. Wow, as you can see, customizing transitions is a fun and creative task that has rich rewards because you're creating something that is unique to your brand and your video. And don't forget to add some of these to your library for reuse. If you need any assistance with your Camtasia projects or editing and producing your videos to get your message out, be sure to reach out to me through Messenger or my website, gordeisman.com, and let's have a chat. See you in another video soon.